Let's walk through making the cluster stitch in our January instructions of the June throw. Now the clusters are going to make up the peak of our ripple because the ripple has the rounded peaks and then it's got valleys, but this, the cluster stitch is going to make our peak. So to begin, I've got my decreases at the beginning of my row. Next, we have to chain one. And now I'm going to cluster into this next stitch. And to do the cluster, we yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now I have three loops on my hook and I'm going to do this two more times. So yarn over, insert my hook into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now I have five loops on my hook, yarn over, insert the hook into that same stitch again, yarn over, pull up a loop. And now you can see I have seven loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all seven of those loops. So now I have my nice happy little cluster here. We're going to make four more clusters in each one of the next four stitches with a chain one between them. So I'm going to chain one, cluster in the next stitch. So yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert the hook into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over, insert the hook into the same stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. There are my seven loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through all seven. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and work the next three cluster stitches. Now once you kind of get going with these clusters, you find your rhythm with it. So I yarn over and I usually count one, two, three, and I know that I've got my seven loops on my hook. And yarn over, pull through all of them, and I got one more cluster to do. One, two, three. Pull through. So now I have my five clusters, and actually, to, fin to properly finish up the repeat, I have to do that last chain one. So now I have my five cluster stitches with the chain one between all of them that makes the peak of our ripple. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this row, and then we're going to talk about making the single crochets on the return pass. Now the next row that we're going to work is a single crochet in every stitch and every chain one space. Now the chain one spaces are pretty easy to see because we've got a pretty noticeable gap between the clusters and then between our decreased stitches even after the clusters. But where the issue comes in is to tell from the top which of these stitches, which of these V's is the top of our cluster and which is a chain one. What happens is, is that the cluster stitch is a lot wider than a typical double crochet or a single crochet or even a double crochet two together. It's a little wider than that. And it looks like we have two stitches on the top of it, which it's really just the top of the stitch plus the chain one. So to tell which is which, I want you to go over to the opposite side where we created the cluster stitches and take a look at where our stitches are. So this, I think people typically think is the chain one, but it's actually the top of the cluster. And we know that because if I pull on the stitch afterwards, I can see that the if this was a live loop on my hook after just creating a cluster stitch, get that on there. You can see that the cluster stitches is, is there. So this would have been the loop right after the cluster stitch and I would have chained one, which means this is the chain one. This is the top of the stitch of the cluster stitch. So you could put a stitch marker there. Right now I'm going to put my hook there just so we can see. When I come back, I'm going to, I have to single crochet in the chain one space, which is here. And then my next single crochet is going to be in this stitch right here. So let's work through that. Here's my chain one space. Single crochet through there. And you can kind of see when I single crochet through that chain one space, 
it covers that first V. So that's not the top of the stitch. This is the top of our stitch. Single crochet in that stitch. Single crochet in the next chain one space. And you can see the next stitch is very much the same. And what's helpful to remember too, with our peaks and our valleys in this ripple, is that there are 11 stitches in our peaks and six stitches in our valleys. So you may find it helpful to count the number of stitches you're making when you're single crocheting through the peaks and through the valleys. I know I find that very helpful. So here we have our single crochets along the peaks of our January cluster stitches. Here it is from the right side for our January cluster stitches in our Juni throw.